Hello everyone, my name is Boulevard here for Giant Slayer TV to bring you the revival of Fight Night Legends Top 3 decks. In this series, we'll follow along with Fight Night Legends every single week and take a look at top performing decks, popular decks, and decks to keep an eye on. Before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on all the latest content, and if you're interested in playing in a future Fight Night Legends, you can find an application to do so at giantslayer.tv slash LOR. There, you'll fill out a form of some basic information like your name, country of residence, and some information about your previous accomplishments in Legends of Runeterra. While we're always looking to highlight new talent, this is still a competitive tournament. To break down exactly what it is, Fight Night Legends is an eight-person invitational tournament taking place on Thursday, Friday, and Monday for Brazil, Europe, and the Americas respectively. The event runs in the standard Riot Lock format, meaning each player brings three decks with no overlapping champions or region combinations, and bans one of the opponent's decks to play a best of three in which they must win with their two unbanned decks. The event is double elimination, with the top two players being invited back next week for a chance to prove themselves once again. Our first week together is going to be a short one, as both Europe and Brazil's fight nights were cancelled last week, giving us just the Americas to look at. In that event, we saw some old favorites like Lee Sin Zoe, Bandle Tree, and even Glorious Evolution Shellfolk brought by multiple competitors, but none were able to crack into the top four. Instead, this week was won by the previous week's runner-up, Beast Llama, running back the same lineup of Zillion Echo, Akshan Nar, and Scouts. Albeit with a two-card change to each one of his decks, the most notable being the addition of Golden Ambassador to his Zillion Echo. With 14 Piltover and Zon cards in the deck, hitting Allegiance might look sketchy at first, until you remember the large amount of Predict cards available to manipulate the top card. Second place was another familiar face, last week's champion Floppy Mudkip. Floppy went for a totally different lineup than the previous week, bringing Scouts, Twisted Fate Nami, and Akshan Nar. With the score currently sitting at 1-1 to -1 between these two competitors, I am very excited to see the climax of the rivalry play out next Monday. With you caught up to speed on the events, let's get into the decks that impressed. Taking the number 3 spot, we have Demacia Yordles in Arms, aka the best Tristana deck we've really ever had. Following the strategy of previous iterations, the deck's looking to go wide and finish the game with Yordles in Arms and or Rallies. Yordles in Arms has pretty much always been at the very least a fine deck, but there's a few things that sets this one apart from the rest. The first is Gleaming Lantern, giving you a second unit alongside Bandle City Mare that reduces the cost of your cards and lets you go wider, faster. The second is Grandfather Fey, who is a multi-region Fey that generates another multi-region Fey, taking advantage of whichever cost reducer you have in play and buffing any Fey who come in and helping to make sure that you don't run out of cards. And finally, Tristana, who levels faster than ever thanks to cards like Grandfather Fey, letting you fit in more organic multi-region cards than ever before. This was the Nar deck of choice for both 3rd and 4th place this week, and seems to be the new standard for Yordles in Arms after the Piltover and Zon variant went from one of the most played decks last week to completely absent from this week's event. Coming in at number 2 this week is Akshan Nar, which unlike Demacia Yordles in Arms has been unable to completely push out its predecessor. I'm talking about Sivir Akshan Demacia, though Akshan Nar is actually more comparable to that deck's predecessor, Sivir Zed. While that deck had to jump through some hoops to get double attack onto a Ruin Runner, Akshan Nar can do it with ease thanks to Papercraft Dragon. It was hard to imagine that a double attack unit with attach wouldn't find a home, and it seems that the overwhelmed combo of Nar and Ruin Runner have agreed to put it up for the time being. Players are still figuring out some of the filler cards in the deck, but the main combo of Papercraft Dragon and Ruin Runner was strong enough to cinch a first and second place finish this week. And finally, this week's number one deck was able to take a spot in both finalists' lineups as well as third place, it's Scouts. One of the oldest decks in Runeterra got a big boost with the release of A Curious Journey, as Duran Sculptor and Petrosite Broadwing both breathed new life into the archetype, with Champion Beast Llama even teching in a copy of Shield of Durand. This high-performance week out of the deck has been a long time coming, as new cards and buffs are injected into the deck every few months, and the culminating increased health of its units between buffs and the new Duran Sculptor are finally paying off in a rather ping-focused meta. Slower decks like Lee Sin and Darkness tend to get snowballed by the board pressure while they have to try and save their removal for high-profile targets like Misfortune, and Bandle City go-wide decks like Yordles and Arms and Bandle Tree don't really have the trading power on most of their units to stand up to the hearty health totals paired with a timely rally. It's a perfect storm, one that may pass, but at least for now, Scouts is on an absolute rampage. 
And that's going to do it for this week's top three decks of Fight Night Legends. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date. And let me know in the comments which decks you think will be moving out of or into the top three next week. Thank you.